Nietzsche said, can one live it? All truths are bloody truths to me. And that's, an, that's one of the things I really like about reading the existentialists too. It's not, there's no, there's no abstract disembodiment in their philosophy. You see that the people who are writing as existentialists are committed to what they say. They, they, want, to, they want to enact what they say in the world. It's, and it's romantic because it does involve emotions and motivation. It's, 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 see, with reason alone, the enlightenment view of reason was that reason and the passions were antagonistic. That all the passions could do would be to cloud reason. And that it was reason's job to lift itself up above the body and the emotions. And clarify the nature of the world. The, the existentialists would deny that completely. They would say, no, 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 it's that the purpose... The appropriate mode of being is to act properly And rationality can be a guide to that But can also, it can also deceive in all sorts of ways the, the passions inform you They don't cloud your reasoning Although of course they can Because they tend to be kind of single-minded You know, They can take you off course But that doesn't mean that They're enemies of rational clarity per se And when the existentialists write You can tell <laughs> They put their whole being into it, so it's, it's, it's gripping and passionate The existentialists have also identified sort of classes of pathology that are unique in some ways They're outside the purview of standard psychology and psychiatry So, you, you see often, if you're looking at debates, say, between atheists and religious people one of the things that tends to set the atheists back on their heels is the observation that the religious people make that if there's no final meaning to anything, then there's no meaning to anything. And so that Im immediately elicits it's a kind of nihilism. It's like, if nothing means anything, why do anything? And it's a reasonable argument, because doing things requires effort. And you can say to yourself, well, why should I do X or Y, especially if X is difficult, if who the hell's going to know in a thousand years, or who the hell's going to know in a hundred years, or why does it matter anyways? And then the atheists will tie themselves up in knots trying to address that issue. But the existentialists take a different perspective. Nietzsche said, for example, he, was, he viewed the emergence of nihilism as a kind of cultural pathology. And so you remember, of course, that it was Nietzsche who said, God is dead. Right? You see that scrawled out in like washroom graffiti from time to time, you know? It's, 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 it's like a truism, but that isn't what Nietzsche said He said, God is dead and we have killed him and we'll never find enough water to wash away the blood Which is a very, very different statement It wasn't like he was proclaiming it triumphantly It was more like a ca catastrophic loss of meaning You know, the sort of loss of meaning that the terror management theorists would say Would, would produce like a traumatic pathology Now what Nietzsche observed was that there, you know, and of course you all know this to some degree, that in the course of the development of, of scientific knowledge and rationality That a contradiction between our historical moral knowledge, formulated in religious terms, and our descriptive rational knowledge emerged Conflict between science and religion Now part of that conflict is illusory, because the purpose of religion is to tell you how to act And the purpose of science is to provide clear descriptions of, of what? Universally apprehensible reality, they're not working in precisely the same domains It doesn't matter, Nietzsche's observation was this He said, well, it's pretty clear that the scientific rationalists Are going to demolish the substructure of Western religious belief And then, of course, the substructure of that sort of belief all the way around the world And there's going to be consequences to that And he said, there's going to be two consequences and he predicted this, say, in 1850, it's something like 1850, in will to power, it's unbelievable He said that what's going to happen in Europe is that there'll be the rise of socialist-slash-communist utopian schemes that will possess people And that will produce a war, and the consequence of that war will be that hundreds of millions of people die And he predicted that like 80 years before it happened Well, maybe less if you think of the Russian Revolution as a precursor of that Which Dostoevsky would have certainly viewed it as a precursor of that Now, so there's totalitarianism on one side That's, that's one of the dangers Another danger is nihilism And the nihilism emerges because you shatter the meaning structure within which action is conceptualized And so those are like two emergent pathologies that threaten people now, 
if you talk to someone who's nihilistic, and rationalists are almost always nihilistic, especially if they're depressed they'll say things like like I already told you what difference does it make anyways? now Dostoevsky played out those themes, for example, in, in a really in, in a very, very powerful way in a number of his books so, The Possessed, for example it's funny, because Dostoevsky and Nietzsche wrote at the same time and Dostoevsky wrote literature and Nietzsche wrote philosophy but they were doing exactly the same thing in Dostoevsky's The Possessed, he talked about description of the Russian political, economic, ideological scene and what he saw happening was that as people moved away from their enmeshment in a historically conditioned meaning system so that was, say, Judeo-Christianity that they started to become susceptible to utopian, rationalist, utopian ideologies it was so out with one belief system and in with another and the, the, the other was more dangerous because like the religious system sort of emerged from the bottom up and, and they were weird and mythical and difficult to understand from a rationalist perspective whereas the utopian schemes were rational constructions ideologies, very narrow, and they were just imposed on people so for the example the communists would say from each according to his ability to each according to his need which sounds wonderful, but if you put it into practice it's like it's instantly genocidal so Nietzsche said, well, as the modern world suffers through the contradiction between scientific rationality and ritual religion historically conditioned the consequence of that is going to be that two pathologies will emerge one is reliance on totalitarianism and so I would say to the degree that any of you are ideological then you've succumbed to the one pole of of post-religious pathology and all you've done is replace adherence to one set of beliefs, even though religious beliefs are not precisely beliefs with another that's rationally constructed and incredibly dangerous he said, well if it isn't going to be totalitarianism, it's going to be nihilism but the thing that's so interesting about the existentialists is they make a forthright claim that regardless of whether or not the fact that people will turn to those alternatives is a rational, can be rationalized, it makes sense that it would happen it's still pathological, it's like, a, it's a, it's like an a priori statement, so I could say, well, let's say you're nihilistic you know, you, you lack, you have a lot of doubt about life's meaning and purpose, and it's like it's eating at you, it's, it's, it's a disease of the soul and you come to me and you tell me 30 logical reasons why what you say has to be true and I would say those are excellent logical reasons, and you're making a very powerful argument but it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant the fact that you're nihilistic means that you're infected with a pathology and whether or not you can justify it rationally is completely irrelevant all it means is that your rational mind is capable of spinning off a sequence of logical tricks and the ultimate truth is, it's undermining your ability to live and so it's wrong why is it wrong? I don't care why it's wrong it's not relevant why it's wrong what's relevant is you can't live like that and that's an existential claim because the existentialists are interested in a different kind of truth they would say that a truth you cannot live is not 